Good evening, coming up tonight. It's college application season and U of SC is expecting something big. More on university enrollment. We have a COVID update for the state of South Carolina. Hear how the numbers changed over the holiday. And finally, Willie B was rocking Saturday, but the Gamecocks couldn't quite live up to the, all the talking. But before all that, meteorologist Ben Carlin is here to give us a preview of this week's forecast. Yeah, Marissa. I mean, it's really cold right now outside here in the capital city. And last week, last week's Monday was warmer than tonight, but this week is warmer than last week was. It's definitely been a weird November, to say the least, in terms of the weather here in South Carolina and in the capital city. But hopefully things will be made a little bit more clear with consistent temperatures this week. We'll have more for that later on tonight's edition of SGTV Nightly News. Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio, this is SGTV Nightly News. Good evening and happy second night of Hanukkah. Carolina, I'm Justin Walsh. And I'm Marissa Jure. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today, the South Carolina Department for Health and Environmental Control reported 267 total COVID-19 cases, along with four deaths. As of November 27, 2021, Richland County has 10 new COVID-19 cases and five probable cases making it 15 total cases for Richland County. DHEC is encouraging everyone to get vaccinated as new variants spread across the U.S. Over Thanksgiving break, Interim President Harris Pastides released a virtual State of the University update to keep students, faculty, staff, and families updated on the happenings of the university. He discusses all things from athletics to university health to overall student experience. As students will see a tuition freeze, U of SC employees in permanent positions will see an increase in hourly pay beginning on January 1st, 2022. In his address, Pastidis says, and quote, we also aim to be among the state's best employers and to do that we must attract and retain good employees with competitive wages, end quote. The university is home to over 14,000 employees and Pastidis stresses how important their work is throughout uncertain times. An upscale Greek restaurant is coming to Main Street in Columbia. Ambrosia Taverna will locate at former elite Epicurean. As the remodeling continues, the restaurant owner Jason Floyd is going before the City of Columbia's Board of Zoning Appeals Thursday to ask for a permit to stay open past midnight. This two-story restaurant would be opening in early 2022. Throughout the pandemic, college application and enrollment rates have fallen, but the University of South Carolina may just see a change of pace come to the start of the next academic year. USC is projecting a record number of freshman applications for the upcoming year. The university has already seen a 13% increase in freshman applications compared to this time last year, according to a video message from Interim President Harris, Harris Pastides. This news comes following Pastides' tuition freeze announcement for an additional year. I mean, through, obviously throughout the pandemic, a lot of students are choosing to not attend college now, but it's great to see that our student body continues to grow. Like last year was our, I think, second biggest freshman class ever. Yes, absolutely. I think that is great that there are more people wanting to come to school, but especially just like, it's nice that even last year, and the year prior to that, there was also a big freshman class too, so that's also really great. I feel for like every year they're just saying like, we're welcoming the newest, the biggest yeah. freshman class, like yeah. I'm an orientation leader every year. Yeah. For the past years I've had, it's the biggest one, it's the biggest one. It's just, who would want to be a Gamecock? Yeah, of course. Oh. Obviously. <laughs> well, that's all we have for Columbia News. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Now, I'm sad to say this is our last sports report of the semester, but I from our Hall of Fame sports reporter Braden Malloy, who definitely dressed for the occasion, but he's ready to send us out with a bang. Braden? Oh, Justin, you're so sweet. I appreciate that. Well, last week, if you asked Gamecock Athletics about losing, they would have looked at you like, losing? Never heard of her. Well, this weekend, she came back with vengeance, like we were Jake Gyllenhaal and she was Taylor Swift regaining the rights to her music. Because out in Utah, the Gamecocks women's soccer team took on BYU, looking to advance to a spot in the NCAA Final Four. Sadly, Elite would be all this team was this year as they fell to the 13th ranked Cougars 4-1, ending their season with a record of 14-7-1. Both teams came out throwing haymakers. The Gamecocks attempted two shots on goal and three corner kicks in the first two minutes, but BYU's haymakers were more alley-like as they scored on their first offense possession and then a second time 15 minutes later. 
Gamecocks' Corinna Zulo scored her fifth goal of the season to make it 2-1 at the half, but the Cougars scored within a minute after halftime, and with a 15-1 shot on goal advantage, they added their fourth goal of the game in the 61st minute. This season marked the third trip to the Elite Eight for the ladies in their past five seasons. And with three row wins in the tournament, it was the team's ninth consecutive 12-win season and their 17th winning season in Shelly Smith's 21 years as head coach. Sorry, I just uh, needed a moment before we talked about this past Saturday. <clears throat> okay, Thanos and Infinity Wars. Palpatine and basically all nine Star Wars, and the haters getting friends removed from Netflix. Look, what I'm saying is, sometimes the bad guys win. And that was the case this past Saturday as Clemson won their seventh straight Palmetto Bowl 30 to nothing. A game filled with so much hope definitely did not live up to the hype. After a dominating win last week against Wake Forest, the struggling Clemson offense looked as if, as if it had found its rhythm and proved that it had as it ran for 265 yards and threw for another 100. The Tigers carried a 17 lead into half and there really wasn't much fight from the Gamecocks after that as Carolina punted twice and turned the ball over on downs four times in their six sec second half drives. The combination of Jason Brown and Zeb Nolan did eclipse the 100-yard mark in the passing game, but the run game was held to 43 yards, and the offense as a whole held to their second lowest output this season, as the Gamecock offense looked inconsistent and discombobulated as pretty much any game it had this season. Clemson's seventh straight win ties the longest win streak in the series since 1940, and their shutout was the first since their 45-0 win in 1989. Yes, it was a disappointing way to end the regular season. Trust me, as a senior, it was not the way I wanted my last game to go, but the thing is, we still get one more game to watch our Gamecocks, which no one really expected at the beginning of the season, and that's a testament to the work that Coach Beamer and his coaching staff have done just in his first year. These things take time, but Shane has got the team's future on an express shipping. ESPN currently projects Carolina to play West Virginia or Kansas State in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl on December 28th, and we'll know for certain as the CFB selection show airs at noon this Sunday. Now look, if you had told this good old Georgia boy when he graduated high school that he would spend the next four years cheering for and reporting on the South Carolina Gamecocks, I would have laughed you out of the building. However, slowly but surely, I have grown to love the color garnet, appreciate the blistering noon games, thrive at the all-day tailgates, and become a Willie B. Stan and walk away a lifelong Gamecock fan. That's all I have for your Carolina sports this year. Back to you, Marissa. Thanks, Brayden. Coming up, next we will talk about holiday events in Columbia, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Gamecocks. I'm Alexa Daly. And I'm Lauren Waters, here to give you all the entertainment updates. Are you in the holiday spirit? Do you like yoga? Or maybe you like beer? Well, this Wednesday, Crafty Draft Brewery is hosting Ugly Sweater Beer Yoga. And yes, this event is exactly what it sounds like. An instructor from Good Company Yoga will guide you through poses and breathing, pra breathing practices combined with local beer. A prize will be awarded for the best, ugliest sweater. The class is from 6.30 to 7.30 and costs $15 to participate. I think this is a great finals week activity, combines yoga, the holidays. I think this could be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, definitely. I am not very flexible, so <laughs> yoga is really not my thing, but we can always try it. <laughs> This Thursday, Gamecock Entertainment hits you with another Thursday After Dark event. Join them from 7 to 11 p.m. at the Riverbank Zoo and Gardens. There will be decorated Christmas lights and all your favorite animals. The perfect combination to get you into the holiday spirit. All you need is your Carolina card for free admission and free shuttles to the zoo. I am actually going Saturday with my parents. We ended up getting tickets, so I'm not going Thursday because I have classes Friday, but I'm going uh, Saturday. I couldn't tell you the last time I've been to the zoo, so I feel like I should probably. <laughs> it's so fun. I it love the zoo. Fun. Well, speaking of the holiday spirit, make sure you get started on your holiday shopping, the annual Christmas craft fair. The holiday market is open from Thursday, open on Thursday and Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. Stop by the Ice House Amphitheater where there will be over 75 vendors selling unique gifts, food, and more. Now, I haven't started any holiday shopping and I got a lot of people on my list, so I think I, think I should get there. <laughs> I think I should too. I have like, maybe one gift off to Amazon mm -hmm. and then like two or three from Black Friday, but other than that, I don't have much at all. And it's good to shop local. <laughs> 
For your final holiday event this week, did you know you could ice skate without ice? Well, now you can. Carolina Productions is hosting Winter Wonderland where you can skate on an iceless skating rink. Weird, right? It will also feature holiday cookies for decoration and cheerful holiday music. The event is being held at Russell House this Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Come out and bring your friends to watch our campus become a winter wonderland. This sounds so exciting. There's one time that I have seen an iceless skating rink. It's really, really cool. I never have, but I feel like it's a lot safer than regular ice skating. I know for me, I don't, have, I don't have any balance either. I so definitely do not. <laughs> That's all the holiday happenings we have for you this week. Up next, meteorologist Finn Carlin will tell you what that winter temperatures are upon us. Stay tuned. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy first day of the last week of classes and welcome back to SGTV Nightly News. I'm here to give you the forecast for this week. And if you were wondering what the heck I was saying earlier, that's kind of the same feeling that I've been having towards this month here in the capital city. It's been a weird weather month because last week was colder than this week's going to be, but tonight is warmer than last Monday. It's really weird. Columbia's really kind of thrown us a curveball, but it's going to be a chilly start your week. If you can tell right now, it's really kind of really cold outside. But we're going to have a warm weekend coming up ahead. Temperatures are going to rise over the course of the week. So really, it's a cold Monday, Tuesday, warmer rest of your week. Clouds are going to roll in on Saturday, but mostly it'll be pretty sunny here in the capital city. But unfortunately, as doom and gloom befalls us with finals week, so will the cold and so will the clouds. But hopefully things will be getting better after that. But the high temperature trend this week, the average is 70. But tonight was looking, or today, sorry, and tomorrow, looking in the mid-60s. And we're going to really be getting up in temperatures 74 and 75 on Thursday, Friday, the peak of this week. You're really going to start wanting to put some of those coats away, bring out the shorts and t-shirts, especially come Friday. It's going to be a warm start to your weekend, a really beautiful weekend here in Columbia. It's going to be 72 on Saturday and 65 on Sunday. So we're starting at 65 tomorrow, ending at 65, going into next week, into finals week, and it will unfortunately be kind of cold and cloudy here in the Midlands. But today in Columbia, sorry, today in South Carolina, it was 65 here in Columbia. We really saw mid to low 60s here in the Midlands and especially low 60s up in the upstate, 62 in Greenville and Greenwood, 61 in Rock Hill. Along the coast, a little bit cooler, 59 in Myrtle Beach, 62 in Charleston and in Hilton Head, really relying on the Midlands to kind of keep those warmer temperatures here in the state. But right now in South in Columbia, South Carolina, it's about 45 degrees. It's pretty chilly. It feels like 43. We have a really low humidity, 25% humidity right now. So really low, about seven miles of a north wind here going on right now. It's clear and cold, obviously. Sunset was at 514, so about two hours ago, local times around 717 p.m. This week, though, as I was saying, we're going to start cool and we're going to keep going warmer up until Sunday. But we're going to start sunny and cool tomorrow. It's going to stay sunny. Temperatures are going to rise on Thursday and then Friday. Grab the t-shirts and grab the sunglasses because it's going to be warm. It's going to start feeling like more fall weather rather than winter weather. But then that winter weather is going to kind of come back in as the clouds start to roll in come Saturday and Sunday. Clouds are going to roll in on Saturday. It's still going to be pretty sunny here in Columbia especially. And then temperatures will drop on Sunday. But that's all I have for you here tonight. Thank you so much for allowing me to do the weather over the course of this past semester from the technical difficulties that we've seen every now and then to me talking about my sweaters. It's truly been a joy here on SGTV Nightly News to bring you your forecast every single Monday night. But please be sure to stay tuned because we have a great Carolina K9 coming up for you right after the break. Stay with us. Finally tonight, Tonight's Carolina canine is Vinny. The picture was sent in to us by Caroline Smith. Vinny is a three-year-old pug from Florence, South Carolina. When Vinny greets you, he'll let you pet him for a few minutes and then bring you a toy to force him to play with you. Vinny also in loves, he enjoys eating dog beds. I mean, that's interesting, but power to him. <laughs> that's too funny. I love pugs. That picture was so cute. He's just like, I want to I wanna play with them. Just I just love pug. I grew up, my, the one recollection I have of like my grandma growing up, she had like this pug that I grew up with, like it was, grew to be 13. I love that so thing, so I have a spot, soft spot for pugs. Oh, it's so Precious. cute. Oh, so adorable. Well, that's all we have for tonight's edition of SGTV Nightly News. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all of our content, be sure to also visit us online at sgtvonline.com. For the last time for SGTV Nightly News, I'm Marissa Jure. And I'm Justin Walsh. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina, forever to be.